Welcome to Last Watch. I'm your host, Tony Duchesne. That's your host, Bernard Meisler. This week, we're talking about Mrs. America. Uh, Bernard, how you doing? I'm good, Tony. How are you? I'm well. I'm well. It's, yeah. a, it's always a pleasure to see you. Yes, of course. Of course. Uh, so um, I think we're going to have some disagreements about this show based on what? Our, our brief, our brief <laughs> pre-show uh, Facebooking, but uh, that's good. I, I, I love this show, and uh, I'll tell you why I loved it. Uh, several reasons. Really, uh, I think it's just... Uh, did, you watch, did you watch the whole season? I did. I watched the whole season. Okay, because I, I, I just watched the first episode. Okay. I haven't seen beyond that. So I'll okay. have some questions for you. Okay. And, uh, all right, well, so like just about any good show, it gets better. You know, first episode is really more set up or whatever. But right. I, I love this show for two reasons. Uh, first of all is the cast, uh, which is incredible. It's an incredible cast. And uh, uh, Kate Blanchett. I mean, Kate Blanchett. She's just like a goddess. I mean, come on. She's like uh, one of the best. I, I really, I, I, this, okay, can I, I'm going to be totally ignorant here. I didn't know where I've seen her before. I've only oh heard my her. goodness! I, uh, I, 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 and then I and then I look through all their uh, credits. And I'm like, oh, I think I've only seen two things she's in, and oh, what right. didn't impress me. She was in the talented Mrs. Mr. Ripley, uh, right. Lord of the Rings. Never uh, saw those. Yeah, she played Catherine Hepburn in The Aviator. Uh, the uh, Aviator, not a great movie. Uh, she won. <laughs> here's where here's where we tie in. Once again, we can't get away from this. She won the Academy Award for Best Actress in Woody Allen's Blue Jasmine. Oh, right. And did she speak out against him? I don't remember. I hope not. I don't remember. Uh, it's, but anyway, she's, she's, just, she's gorgeous, a fantastic actor. Um, it's great. Uh, then you got Rose Byrne. Who so, with, so with Kate Blanchett, I had to look this up because as I was watching it, Oh my God! It is Kate Blanchett close up. Kate Blanchett close up. Kate yeah. Blanchett reacts. Yeah. And I'm going. And I was like, I got to see if she's executive producer on the show. Yeah. Sure enough, she is. Yeah, but it's also look. I was like, what? Now when, do they keep doing that through the show where it's just? Oh, she gets lots of yeah, but you know, it's I mean, it's it's her it's her show. She's like, it's kind of so. It, this is the show is the story of the of second wave feminism, the women's movement of the 1970s. And it seemed like the Equal Rights Amendment, the ERA, was in the bag. And uh, uh, so the second wave feminism, uh, first wave was like 100 years ago, hard to believe. There was the suffragettes looking for the right to vote and to go to college and things like that. Hard to believe that was just 100 years ago. So the second wave was like, hey, wait a minute. How about uh, equal pay for equal work? That was kind of what second wave feminism was about. Um, but uh, in a nutshell, I guess. And it was people like Gloria Steinem and Bella Abzug and uh, 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 others, I'll just say for now. But uh, they, so the, the way the show works over the nine episodes is they, f they focus on one of those, Shirley Chisholm, who I'd kind of forgotten about, kind of amazing, ran as a black woman, as a congressman for president in 1972 and actually made some noise. Uh, so each episode sort of focuses on one of those uh, uh, women, one of the, the, the really? feminists. Really? Oh, oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, that, so oh, that excites me. Yeah, yeah, it was really good. I thought, and they, so, but, but like half the episode is about them, and the other half is about Phyllis, right? Because right. So Phyllis, Phyllis. Yeah, go ahead. No, just because uh, the, there was something where I was watching the first episode. I um I don't I really don't know a lot about this era. I don't I don't know a lot about politics because like. Over uh, oh, half of my life, I was told to not even read politics. Right. Growing up, a child was with us. You have to stay out of it. So right. I'm still trying to learn what a Democrat and Republican is. Right. This is where so I'm coming at. That's very your your background is very germane to this because uh, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. But let me just let me just finish uh, saying uh, yeah. about this. so that uh, Phyllis Schlafly was uh, kind of showed herself presented herself as being just a housewife who doesn't like the ERA because it'll take away my privileges. Meanwhile, she's like was out and about. She ran for Congress. She was very involved in politics. And so she started a uh, rebellion against the ERA. Kind of Nixon was for the ERA, was like had wide, Republicans were for it. It was in the bag. And then Phyllis Schlafly started this anti-ERA, stop ERA movement. And uh, spoiler alert, they won. They, they stopped the ERA from passing. It was kind of amazing. You know, it's basically mm -hmm. just equal civil rights for women. And it's, 
people uh, don't know or forget, but it was like in the 60s, like uh, women couldn't get a credit card. They couldn't like, you know, do things like, they had to do everything through their husband. It was just, they really uh, were very much second-class citizens. So, uh, I'm all for nobody they, getting credit cards, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> what, what about that? Any, anyway, this is also a very timely show because, um, uh, it, it's also, I got a quote from Kate Blanchett. She said, there's no point going back and looking at history unless you're saying something about the present. So in a nutshell, of course, it's like trying to tell the story from this point of view, but the idea is that Phyllis Schlafly is the one who brought in uh, the evangelicals into the Republican Party. Before like uh, mid to late 70s, the evangelicals were like you said, they like, we don't want anything to do with godless Washington. Jesus said, render unto Caesar yeah. that which is Caesar's and all that, right? And so, the Jehovah's Witnesses just kept going with it. They're still that way now. <laughs> in interesting. That's yeah. interesting. But, uh, uh, and Phyllis Schlafly, I, I mean, according to this show, I'm sure there were other people who had uh, uh, the involvement as well, but they were just, you know, they brought the evangelicals, this huge voting bloc who are just the most conservative. The only issues they care about are basically abortion and, you know, guns rights. And like, that's totally changed American politics over the last 40 years. They're, they're the ones who got Reagan elected, basically. So, uh, anyway. Thank you, by the way. Yes. Thanks. 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 And that's very Thanks. sarcastic. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. So anyway, it's, like, it's great, though. It's kind of like uh, the hand, it's kind of like the real life version of The Handmaid's Tale. And, you know, Kate Blanchett just like goes to town playing this woman who, in my opinion, we don't usually try to talk about politics here, but you can't avoid it with this show. It was just like a very evil woman, you know, uh, who just like uh, was really more concerned with the self-promotion, you know, of herself than any one issue. It's like, this is the, oh, she tried other issues. She was really into defense. And, but also this, it's also interesting because they show she was like, she came from like this, like part of the Republican party that was very much looked down upon by the mainstream Republican Party. Like, like these are the people, like the John Birch Society and just virulently anti-communist, anti any kind of social, you know, programs or whatever. And they basically thought that like, you know, Nixon and Henry Kissinger were like, you know, too far left. They were too far left for them. And it's really kind of frightening because you see over 40 years, these are the people who've taken control of yeah. the Republican Party and the country, like the, the, the farthest right wing. Yeah. And so, of course, the Democrats have gone farther right as this happened. And hmm. uh, yeah. So anyway, I thought, the I thought the show was really interesting. I knew some that's, of this history, but I didn't the, know a lot of it. See, that's the thing. And so I was watching the show as a show first. Mm -hmm. I was watching the show as, let's see what the acting is. Let's see what the directing is. Let's see what the writing is. Mm -hmm. And then... And, and part of me is just like, this is interesting, but I'd rather see the documentary because it's, um, it's people, I, when I look at it, it's people I don't care about in any way at all. Hmm. It's these like well-to-do kind of Southern people who are just like jibber, jabber, jibber, jabber, jibber, yeah. jabber, jibber, jabber, yeah. until we get to Tracy Ullman's character. Okay. And then I saw that and I went, that's the story I want to follow. I wish, right. I wish it was told from that point of view right because that just was like those are the people i want to hang out with and that's right. why i have um i'm the guy that can never watch any of these british shows about the royalty and that just i i right, it doesn't right, right. connect with me on any level because i don't get it and oh, then man. i saw the i saw the tracy ullman and all the all the ladies around that and i'm like i want to be in that show can we go to that show right 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 and tracy ullman of course plays uh uh, uh betty friedan who wrote the, uh, I, I'm blanking, wrote the, the Feminine Mystique, which basically is given credit for starting the feminist movement in the mid-60s. Okay. So I, I, this was happening when I was a tot, you know, so, and I'd heard about it later, but this was, it was, I'd always heard of these, I'd always heard about Bella Abzug and Betty Friedan and Gloria Steinem, really didn't know that much about them. Gloria Steinem founded Ms. Magazine, um, but, uh, uh, yeah, so each 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 episode gives a a, a different. Um, uh, but anyway, Kate Blanchett, I just think knocks it out of the park acting wise. Rose Byrne, who's uh, in that show Damages, pretty good. Bridesmaid, also an Aussie like Kate Blanchett. 
uh, Elizabeth Banks from uh, who's Jack Donaghy's wife on 30 Rock uh, <laughs> in many movies. John Slatterly, Roger from Mad Men. Uh, and well, and the, the other thing I wanted to talk about was the tone of the show. Because mm -hmm. right away, because I, I just, something irked me about the tone of the show. Okay. And that's when I went, who the hell, who the hell is okay. doing this show? And then I saw, I was like, it was Mad Men and Desperate Housewives. Right. Both of those shows, I don't like the tone of those shows. Oh. Now, John Hamm is sexy as hell smoking a cigarette. Okay. Is that his name? John Hamm, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I could watch that, but the sh the, there was there was just something where it was just they were like pushing tone way too much okay where i'm just like i don't even care it it does it it doesn't engage me with giving a shit about the characters i guess all right. that's all yeah. right I can, I can see your point although i will disagree with you i thought mad what men, mad men was i thought <laughs> I, I loved mad men i didn't care for desperate housewives but again it's kind yeah. of funny because desperate housewives to the stop era movement these were like the you know the desperate housewives and yeah. you know there's a lot of scare tacit there were a lot of this, like, your man won't have to support you anymore. You'll have to go out and get a job. And, you know, they're just spreading all these, like, lies right. and, and, and untruths about what, what it would mean to have equal rights in the Constitution. And the, and the problem with pilots in the first episodes, because, I, like, I remember Big Love. Like, I, um, when I was working on the Jesus Jerk uh, TV series pitch that I was working on before it got to uh, Stoltz, um, I watched the Big Love pilot. And I was like, oh my God, this really sucks. But that's, <laughs> but they were just, they had to pound all these like yeah. element, 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 element. And right. I had to kind of do that too. And I was just like, this doesn't feel right. And it's, it just. Yeah, it's interesting. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's an art form unto itself, I guess, yeah, writing, yeah. writing a pilot and really trying to. And uh, to get the series rolling. Now, series is this, rolling. now, does this ser is this a series that ends after one season or is yes. this going to keep it's going? A mini, it's a mini series. Oh, okay. Strangely, strangely enough, not that it matters in the grand scheme of things, but uh, this is like, I think, the first <laughs> miniseries I've ever seen that had nine episodes. Uh -huh. Not six or eight or 10 or 12. They went for nine. They did an odd I was, number. I was like surprised. I was like, oh, episode nine. That means there's going to be one more, right? Mm -hmm. There's always 10. There's, anyway, it's, it's nine episodes and that's it. But yeah, again, you're saying they focus on Kate Blanchett. It's, you get one of the world's best actors, Oscar winner, to do a TV show. You play it up. You know what I mean? You like you you work with it. You know. Uh, I, I would have been I would have been the uh, the voice of dissent in the writers room, and then never got a job again. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, no. Yeah. It's just like, you know, oh, I got to tell you that then this reminds me of like Quentin Tarantino using Brad Pitt in, um, in Glorious Bastards. And there's a five minute scene where Brad Pitt's in the scene, but we don't see his face in that bunker. And I got to, I just laugh at that because I know producers are going, why do you have Brad Pitt? You're not putting him on the screen. Why are we looking yeah. at a bunker? Yeah. And it's, it's so beautiful when like, it's just like, no, no, yeah. we're here for the art. We're here for this. Yeah, I don't care who we have access to. Let's yeah. But anyway, I, I just thought she just knocked it out of the park, just playing the, basically the wicked witch of the West almost. I mean, the damage that this woman has done to society and politics is like hard to, uh, hard to quantify. But yeah, I, I mean, I want to find a documentary on it because I'm totally intrigued by the character. Yeah. But or you can it, just read Wikipedia, you know. Because <laughs> that's always true. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, for whatever it's worth, Rotten Tomatoes gave it ninety six percent. Yeah, and and that's the other thing, which because um, it, it's it's pushing. I, this is when I see a show and I go, "This is getting awards." I just you know oh, immediately it's getting awards. Oh yeah, but also well, would, it's going to do my entire like whatever I have that oh. Blanchett will be nominated for best yes. actress for TV, you know, for whatever. If like, she doesn't, I will cut my penis off live on this, on this pod, on this podcast. And that's in writing. Yeah, that's fine. Um, Cause it's going to happen. But this is one of those shows where they'll get a lot of awards mm -hmm. and it'll be utterly forgotten. This is what Maybe I, so. it, it's going to be one of those. Wait, what, what was that? It'll just, it's going to, it's an award orgy. It's an award orgy for everyone that yeah. they can use on their resume. Yeah. So uh, Do I sound jaded today. I feel a little, a little bit, a little bit. Oh, man. A little bit. Yeah. I mean, where I will, where I will uh, agree with you again, I just thought I, we've mentioned this before. I love the cast and this Margot Martindale is in it. Who is on justified the Americans. She's been in a million movies as a character actor. 
I, I, I just love the, uh, Tracy Ullman, as you mentioned, who had, oh, yeah. uh, you know, had a uh, comedy series in the 80s that The Simpsons came from. Yeah. Which he's best known for now. But all these women in their 40s, 50s, and 60s getting yeah. the starring, the big starring role. That's, that's kind of great. And, uh, and oh, yeah. Character actors, you know, just getting a chance to shine. I, I, I love that. Uh, but I think we're role, seeing that more, too. I, I think that yep. the, the, there's a momentum Absolutely. towards that because people are realizing, realizing great actors are great actors and yeah. stories are just great. Right. It doesn't have to be Beverly Hills 90210. Right. It does if you want to get the billions. Right. But to get the millions and to have some artistry to it. Yeah. And again, you know, Margot Martindale being a, a great example of that because she's uh, uh, not the typical Hollywood starlet look. You know, she's an older woman. She's, she's heavy. Oh, you know? oh, I love her. Oh, no, she's fantastic. I forgot her name. Yeah, the minute I saw her, I was like, oh, rad. <laughs> and every scene she's in, she steals it. Yep. And yep. she doesn't do it to steal it in a, in a uh, facetious way. She's just that great. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. And, and, but it's, and if you look at her IMDb, it's kind of, she has been working so, uh, yeah. solid for 30 years in films and TV yeah. as a character actor. And until very recently, I, I was like, oh, at this point, when this came, I was like, oh, Margot Martindale's in this. Great. I, I know who she is now. From, yeah. The Americans and Justified, I guess. But and uh, so she true. was in Sneaky Pete, the first season of Sneaky Pete. She was, she was, she was the. It's not that great. It's yeah. one of those shows where it's just like I kind of got, oh crap, I got roped into this. Yeah. But she's the thing I remember from Sneaky right. Pete. And also, like in the Americans, we she won an Emmy for, and uh, uh, or was it Justified? She won an Emmy for both those shows. She's steal you know just every scene she's in it's just and before this before she broke into movies and tv in the 90s she was on major broadway production so she's an actor you can tell yeah uh so strangely enough we're supposed to focus on writing so i like the show oh yeah 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 Woo! i like this show because <laughs> of the history and the cast and the acting i will agree with you about so davi waller who did desperate housewives and uh co-wrote some, co-produced a bunch of Mad Men episodes, I guess. Um, I think there's like, in a way, the writing for a show like this is really easy because first of all, the story is laid out for you. And so, and the characters oh. are fully developed. You know, you know, you just like look up and you could go watch some video of Gloria Steinem or read her books or whatever. And, you know, that's the, this is more interesting. Like, this is more like a research project than a writing project. I See, think. I would think the opposite because I would be scared to um I, I would be so scared about how to oh, yeah. oh, no. maneuver it, things I, I, I would feel like there's more pressure in a in a way yes you know so in a sense it's like easy it's like here's your outline here's yeah. all the characters right we know and right. now uh present this in a way that makes sense and you know makes your point and right you know and and is fun to watch or you know easy. exactly where do we take liberties yeah where, where where you know and i would always be scared of where where are we bending the truth too much where right. it's where it's an agenda right where can we where can we keep it together and where right. can we keep the and, characters bouncing off each other right and there was one i mean if you watch the rest of the series you'll see but there's only uh, there was one uh, character one of the main characters was fictionalized sarah paulson's character alice who's uh, Phyllis's friend, who in the end, uh, spoiler alert, starts to break away a little bit, you know, but- uh, that's Is she the, no, no, that's not the same person from that movie, Go. No, 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 that's, okay. uh, uh, I, I love her. I can't remember yeah, yeah. her name, yeah. yeah. I, I love that movie, by the way, too. Isn't it great? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, at the end though, the final, uh, interesting, and they, they talk about this at the end of the ninth episode, the end of the show, and they've lost, right? And they've, they're defeated. Basically, Reagan comes into the White House, ERA's finished. Um, they, were, they fell short. They had 35 states. They needed 38 states to ratify. And in the yeah. last three years, most recently, Virginia in tw January 2020 voted to ratify the ERA. They now have their 38 states. And Congress sent legislation to the Senate to like say, hey, they ran out of the oh, Wait, this isn't country. this isn't done yet? No. Oh no. In real life? In oh my real god. Life, no. <laughs> there have been many other civil rights acts passed over oh, the years yeah. that in effect have given women full rights. Although women still don't make as much per hour as men. They're still 
you know, things have gotten a lot better, but no, it's never, it's never been uh, codified into the constitution. Wow. The constitution. Okay. That blows my mind. I just assumed right. it was. Yeah. yeah. So, and when did it pass? Finally, they got the 38th state in January, 2020, Virginia huh. voted to ratify. And so Congress sent the legislation uh, to the Senate to extend the deadline. The deadline ran out in 1980. They, ran, they, had like, they had like eight years to ratify this and they came very right. Again, at the very beginning, they started out with like 32 states or something. They thought it was in the bag, right? Yeah. Was, huh. The whole thing is just kind of amazing that it was uh, able to be stopped by this uh, incredibly capable and intelligent and evil woman, Phyllis Schlafly. So this is it. So this this changes everything for me because it is very present because this has never been passed. Yeah. And I didn't know that. I thought this was passed like years ago. Oh no, my God. No. And then, and it's right now it's dead in the Senate. Thanks to Mitch McConnell. Wow. Yeah. He won't, he won't take oh. it up. Yeah. So I am getting schooled. Now I do have to watch the rest of it yeah. so I can understand it. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. I should have known that coming in. Yeah. So, but uh, yeah, this uh, uh, very interesting that in the, you know, how things changed, like in the early 70s, it seemed like feminism was, you know, yeah. was rising and the Equal Rights Amendment was in the bag and Nixon was impeached and uh, there's never going to be another Republican president again. And then like five years later, Reagan came in and the yeah. moral majority and all these like evangelical preachers got politicized. People like, you know, Jerry Falwell. And, Let's deregulate everything. Yeah. So... <laughs> anyway, I give it a big thumbs up. It's got its flaws, but uh, you know, it's it's it's. Uh, I, I know some people actually said they found it too painful to watch because they knew how it was going to end with the uh, ERA failing. Oh, but, see, I didn't know. I thought it was going to end in like victory for no, uh, women. Not in but victory, but I, I'm still going to give it a thumbs down, though. I, I, it's, I, that, that, you're right. I just, you have the civil rights uh, that gives you the ability to give it a thumbs down. I thought it was. I just, the, the, yeah, the storytelling, I don't care. I, 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 I think it could have, I, I have ideas. If they oh. want to come to me and do a new miniseries, <laughs> <laughs> uh, like everyone's knocking on my door right now. Yeah, but you know, I, I love giving a thumbs down because I know I just killed like three writing opportunities for myself. Yeah, <laughs> probably. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I loved it, ladies. Call me. <laughs> uh, oh my God. No, no, I'm not politically <laughs> towards these people. Jesus. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I, I also just say that I, I just love this kind of genre of well done historical dramas where I can like watch a show and actually maybe learn a little something too. And I got to say, I am all for that. And I want more mini series and I want, I would rather have more of that than um, TV shows trying to eke out episode, uh, season yeah. four just because we got to squeeze out the money. Ab so, absolutely. Uh, I, I, no, I let's, let's hit it and quit it and move. You know? Yeah, no, I, lo I, I, like, I love that idea that like, like British series have been doing forever. It's yeah. like we have two seasons Stuff yeah. To talk about and then see it. We'll move on, right? Yeah, yeah. Let's be forever, but for many reasons, because of uh, you know, try to uh, serialize stuff and getting the residuals forever. It's all about residuals. We it's that fifth get, year residuals. Right. Yep. It's a, like we got to go. Yeah, and you know, let's uh, we completely run out of ideas. Uh, what can we do to like destroy the legacy of this show in its last couple of years? Right. It Let's, would be hard to think of a million shows that like were on for that long and like really stunk the last two, three years. Cheers. I was thinking cheers. They should have had Sam Malone be, uh, start doing cocaine for the last two seasons, but, but not made it bad, like glorified it. It actually totally worked in his life. Been, that would have been great. <laughs> <laughs> Ted Dance is still alive. If you're out there, I got some ideas. <laughs> yeah, for me, for me, the the uh, the perfect example of that would be the X Files. You know, which was oh, I never watched that show, but I oh, it's such I, a yeah. fun show for the first yeah. three, four seasons, and then they completely ran out of ideas and just huh. milking it for whatever it was worth. Right. Everyone stopped watching it, but they kept. You know? People need to pay for their kids' colleges. They need yeah. a vacation home. That, you know, that's what season four and five are. Vacation yeah. homes, pools, <laughs> kids' colleges. Someone's got to pay those bribes to get your kids into the good college, right? Exactly. Yeah. I want my kids in, US, in USC. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, I think we're – are we good? We're good. We're good. Let's hug it out. And All right, America, then. Mrs. America is good. It's good. <laughs> 
All right. We'll see you next week. Thanks for watching.